Hey guys, Barry Infos here and today I'll show you all the features in Minecraft 1.15. This update is a lot smaller than we're used to, but some of these features and fixes were a needed change to the game, so I'm glad 1.15 happened. So, let's go! Changes to some existing mobs and a brand new one was added to the game. Let's start with the changes first. When spawning cows, sheep, pigs and chickens have a 5% chance to be babies. Similarly, 10% of all wolves, llamas and horses spawn as babies. Parrots can sit on a player's shoulder even when the player is riding an entity such as a boat. They also no longer imitate polar bears, wolves, zombie pigmen and endermen. Zombie villagers converted from villagers no longer despawn. When iron golems take damage, they start to crack. The more damage they receive, the more cracks appear. Healing them is now possible by using iron ingots. A brand new mob was added to the game and that is the bee. They live near nests and hives. If a bee does not have a nest, it will go on a search for one until it finds it. A maximum of three bees can hide in a single hive. They are docile unless being attacked. Alternatively, using Silk Touch and breaking a nest makes the bees not attack you. When bees attack, they poison the target and die 50 to 60 seconds after the attack. Bees can be bred using any type of flower. Also, holding a flower would make the bees follow the player. Bees who pollinate flowers. A pollinated bee can accelerate the growth of crops and sweet berry bushes. After a few pollinated bees enter a nest, the nest will generate honey. Bees are affected by the ban of Anthropod's enchantment. When raining, the bees sleep in the nests. Alright, now more on the bee-related items. Bee nests spawn naturally in flower forests, plains and sunflower plain biomes. When right-clicking on a nest with shears, you can harvest honeycombs. Honeycombs are used to craft bee hives, which serve the same purpose as a bee nest. When right-clicking on a nest with an empty bottle, you can harvest honey. Honey bottles restore saturation and can be used to craft sugar. They also remove the poison effect. Both of these can be automated by placing dispensers next to nests. Redstone comparators now detect how much honey is inside bee nests and bee hives. The output strength is equal to the amount of honey in the hive. When mining a beehive for a nest in creative mode, they'll drop as an item if they contain bees. Honey blocks can be crafted by using honey bottles. They reduce your walking speed and the jump height. When on a honey block, if said block is pushed, Pushed, you'll be pushed alongside with it. Landing on a honey block reduces fall damage. Honeycomb blocks are craftable and are purely decorative. And this concludes all the bee related items. But we have some more item additions and changes as well. They are right clicking on a bed will reset the player's spawn point, even if it's daytime. It also shows the message respawn point set in chat. Bells can now be powered with a redstone signal. Making very annoying alarms is now possible. Possible. Firework rockets fired from a dispenser travel in the direction they were fired. Fire charges to light campfires and armor stands can now be placed via a dispenser. After placing a wet sponge in the nether, it will dry out and turn into a regular sponge. Campfires can now be extinguished with a shovel. Large ferns now drop seeds when destroyed. Iron doors only drop as an item when mined with a pickaxe. After placing a rail, it will face the player. Previously, they faced north-south. A spawn egg for the bee was added. Speaking of eggs, drowned husk, zombie, zombie pigmen and zombie villager eggs can be used on adult versions of these mobs to spawn baby variants. Elytras can now start to glide as soon as the player jumps, as opposed to before when the player had to descend after a jump and then activate them. Birch trees generate in the dark forest biome again. Sweet berries now generate in giant taiga biomes. And this concludes the block and item changes and additions. Some other quality of life improvements were added, including new game rules. Firstly, if the player tries to sleep in the bed occupied by a villager, the villager will be kicked out. All food items can be eaten in creative mode too. The menu screen was changed to an image which includes all the new 1.15 features. Highlighted buttons now have a white outline. As for advancements, bees are now 
included in the 2x2 advancement. Honey bottles are included in the advanced diet advancement. The take aim advancement can now be unlocked by damaging an entity with a spectral arrow. Sticky situation was added. It's unlocked after jumping on a honey block. Bee our guest is another one which we can get after safely collecting honey from a beehive using a campfire. Total bee location was added for moving bee nests with 3 bees inside using silk touch. As for game rules, these are the new ones. This one allows or disallows phantoms to spawn during night time. This one allows the player to respawn immediately without seeing the dead screen. This game rule makes the player not take drowning damage. This one is the same but for foe damage. And once again, the same but for fire damage. And guys, this is pretty much it for all the new 1.15 features and additions. Some more changes were made to commands, some recipes were changed, many bugs were ironed out as well, which you can notice the moment you start up the game, so I don't feel like it's necessary to talk about every single thing. That's why I'll end the video here, I hope I helped, thank you for watching everyone and a very special thank you to my lovely Patreon supporters, Vladus, Soup Smile, Alex Chavez, Max Robinson and everyone else listed on the screen. Thank you so much for the support. 